Hi, welcome to About That. I'm Lauren Bird, in for Andrew Chang. The apprentice government has changed a policy meant to protect LGBTQ students, and it's controversial. I know you say you're not outing children here, but you're putting them in a position that if they want to be themselves in the school system, they're going to have to have their parents told about it. Well, I think that parents are our key partners and stakeholders in education, and we need to respect parent rights, and parents do have rights. The policy is called 713, and the government has changed three parts of it, around self-identification, washrooms, and sports. Some people are worried about the changes, which are also not exactly clear. There certainly seems to be an awful lot of confusion around it at this point. Um, there's discrepancies between what Minister Bill Hogan said in his press conference today and what's actually in the policy. To understand the changes and the controversy, it's important to understand the policy to begin with. And we covered this a couple of weeks back. Here's Andrew explaining 713. Take a look. I recently changed my name to Sade. Policy 713 ensures that my name and my pronouns should be used in my school setting. Okay, so what is Policy 713? Well, it's a set of guidelines that came into effect in New Brunswick in 2020, setting out minimum requirements for schools to be safe, welcoming, inclusive, and affirming environments for LGBTQ students. What does that mean? Well, it means things like not using homophobic language making sure transgender kids have the right washroom access and, you know, letting them take part in the extracurriculars, as with sports, that match their gender. It's all stuff that had pretty broad support until years later, there suddenly wasn't. About a month ago, the group helping implement this policy, you know, training teachers, for example, suddenly had its funding cut. The explanation, the policy was now officially under review. Could I ask the minister to commit to tabling a full inventory and report on the complaints received? Thank you. Minister of Education, Early Childhood Development. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd invite the member if she wants to see uh, what uh, I've received, then uh, she's certainly welcome to submit an RTI. So it's a bit weird, right? Like, like first, that a policy would be reviewed so quickly after it was first implemented, but then to be so dodgy on how much backlash there really is. Like, you know, why wouldn't you just redact names and then, and then just show it all? Now, New Brunswick's premier, Blaine Higgs, says there's one part of the policy that they're most concerned about. The section that allows transgender and non-binary students to choose their own names and pronouns without parental consent, but also that parents shouldn't even be notified of any name change without student consent. So if Alice wants to be Bobby, not only should teachers agree without asking mom and dad, they shouldn't even tell mom and dad unless Bobby says yes. Oh, I think for, for purposely to be hidden from the parents, there's a problem with that. Okay. You're here questioning that a parent should not, should have no right to know. I mean, so that, that's kind of hard to con hard concept to, to grasp in, in the real sense. A lot of parents say they would want to know what's going on with their kid and that the school shouldn't keep secrets from them. But advocates say protecting kids should come first. Many of them have homophobic or transphobic parents, and that could just be because they're uneducated, but those kids don't feel safe at home, and they come to school to have seven or eight or nine hours of feeling safe. My point here is we should listen to parents. We, we should listen to parents. Even homophobic parents and transphobic I, I, parents? I don't, I don't, I'm not distinguishing between one parent or another. Okay, so that's what policy 713 was. And we should add that when this all came down yesterday, it was chaos. The press conference was confusing. Caucus members were revolting. There were threats of elections. The political blustering was real. But at the core of this story is students and what these changes actually mean for them. So let's dig in on that. And to do that, we've got Hadil Ibrahim, who has been covering this story extensively in St. John. Hi, Hadil. Hi. Okay, so let's break this down piece by piece. And we're gonna put up the previous policy and the new one. So what are the changes for section 6.3? And that's the self-identification section. That's the section that saw the most extreme, I guess, change. Uh, in the previous section used to say that all students would be able to choose their name and 
gender, uh, regardless of age, and that teachers would have to respect that and use that informally at least. Uh, now the change says that teachers should be able to respect those changes, but only for students who are 16 years or older. So for students who are under 16 years of age, there are kind of more questions. So it's important to note that the previous policy had it so that parents have to consent for the child under 16 to be able to change their name and pronoun officially in all school documents. Um, so like report cards and things like that. Both policies said that. The old policy said that if the child doesn't consent to involving their parents to make that happen, then teachers and staff would have to find a way to continue to be able to use their the child's chosen name informally. The new policy says if the child doesn't consent to involving their parents, then they should be referred to a school psychiatrist or a school social worker to see if it's possible to um, get them to eventually involve their parents. It does not say what should happen or what teachers should do uh, about the child's chosen name informally while that process is still going on. So that's that's the biggest change in this case. Okay, so the next section is 6.1.5 on sports. And what are the changes in that section of the policy? Uh, that section used to say that all children should be able to participate in extracurriculars that are safe and welcoming and consistent with their gender identity. This change, the new policy, removes the mention of gender identity. So it just says safe and welcoming and ends there. Okay, so not a lot of context about what's happening there then. And then the last section is washrooms, section 6.4. So what are the changes there? So people were a little worried uh, because the minister was saying that that section is reviewed to make sure that female students are comfortable sharing a washroom with a biological male. So people were worried that there would be some limitations to access, uh, but there were no limitations. Uh, there were no significant changes to that policy because it also goes word for word, uh, matches word for word the Human Rights Act. So um, the changes there is just that the every school should have a gender neutral washroom, at least one. That that is private, so they added the word private. And they also added a line that says uh, every school should have uh, one universal, at least one universal change room. Okay, wow, so this is all like a bit vague and kind of confusing. Like, how are people in New Brunswick reacting to this? Well, there was a lot of political turmoil. Uh, before the announcement was made, the Minister of Education said there was consensus in caucus. Um, and then once the announcement was made, uh, about eight members um, refused to join uh, the legislative uh, question period. And they sent out a statement saying that they were extremely disappointed uh, and that this process was very opaque and there was no transparency. Uh, so there was some... Uh, confusion there about what that means. Uh, the premier said that there is going to be a green bill that they're going to have to vote on soon. And if those MLAs don't return, then he will he could trigger an election. Yes. Are you worried that you might have to step down because of that eight members of your caucus today or maybe the next week? Um, no, I'm, I'm not. It, it potentially could call, um, force an election. That that's a possibility. It's a possibility. Would you do that? Would I do that? Uh, it's not without the realm of possibility. I believe that strongly in the case of, of um, finding a solution here where we do not exclude uh, parents in their child's life. But that all fizzled out and uh, eventually they all came back and the bill was, the green bill was defeated. For advocates, uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of confusion. Uh, people weren't sure exactly how this will impact children, especially children under 16, uh, and they are worried that this means that they there won't be any consequences if a teacher wanted to purposefully uh, misgender them or or uh, single them out. Not every single teacher um, is accepting of two SLGBTQIA students or gender nonconforming or trans students. And so one of the problems with this, this policy is that it opens, it opens the door for those teachers to out students. Um, it's, it's just bad. It has created a, a much less safe environment for these kids. Um, what are, what's happening next? What are you watching for? So I'm hoping to be able to confirm with the Minister of Education whether these changes mean that teachers will be 
forced to use a child's birth name regardless of their request uh, to use a certain name or gender if they were under 16 without parental consent. Uh, as it reads right now, it only removes the obligation. It does not force a teacher uh, to use a birth name uh, against the wishes of the student. So I'm working to try to confirm that today. And uh, there were also a few uh, typos uh, that were corrected. It is my understanding that the policy as, as it is now is um, complete, like uh, the review is done, and it will come into effect on July 1st. Wow. Okay, we'll keep an eye on it. Hadil Abraham, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.